Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another session of Toward a Quality of Life coming to you in the month of September on a beautiful Boston day. Today we're going to be talking about the United States perspective, perspective from the Middle East, and perspective of people who have adopted some um, ideas and philosophies that emanate from parts other than the United States and, and are, are from this country as well. I would like to introduce my guests to you this evening. Uh, on my right is Mr. Shabaka, first name Sharif. How was that for pronunciation? So-so, yeah. huh? So-so. Uh, right. yeah. so. I tried. And um, uh, Mr. Shabaka, how's that for pronunciation? No, still wrong. Shabaka. Okay. I did have it sort of right. Uh, is, a, is an import business person. He's been in the United States uh, originally from Egypt. He's been here for the past couple of years. By trade and profession, he's also an accountant um, and um, currently uh, studying and progressing in the world of media as well here in the United States. To my left is Mr. Daoud Shar Sharif. And he's a businessman who runs a business uh, for computer technology uh, in the area, and he's also a community activist. He's the founder of the Boston chapter of the Boston Council for, for the Institution of African Optimism. And uh, Mr. Sharif, to my left, is a member or a, or a devotee of the Faith of Islam, and Mr. Shabaka is uh, also a member of uh, the Muslim religion. Uh, Mr. Sharif is, uh, uh, tells me he was born, brought up Christian to, yes. uh, till he was 22 years old and then became uh, Muslim. And um, uh, Mr. Shabaka was uh, brought up in the Muslim religion from birth, I would assume. Right. Is that right? Okay, so what have you guys, what have either of you got to say for yourself, all things considered, with where we are right now? Uh, anything impromptu about uh, being in the United States or the situation as we sit here today between uh, uh, issues of uh, people of Islam and thoughts about good and evil and who's bad and who's good and, you know, sort of a lot of tension building? Anybody get anything to say? Yes, well, we're in a, a challenging situation uh, today. Uh, I think that uh, there's an opportunity here. Uh, anything that, that happens in life, whether we look at it as negative or positive, there's always an opportunity for us to learn, to grow, and to gain uh, something from that experience. So we have an opportunity today, and it's being experienced, experienced nationwide where people are asking a lot of questions about Islam. What is Islam? What does it mean uh, to be a Muslim? You know, are these ideas that are being pushed around ideas from the Quran or are people having their own perspectives on things? Are, are these ideas originating from social economic conditions throughout the world? Uh, exactly, uh, you know, what does all of this atmospheric pressure mean? So it, there's an opportunity for people to ask questions and when you ask the right questions and you get the right answers and we learn and we grow. Are you, are you saying that um, right now there's many people questioning what is Islam because it's so much in the news and so they want to learn more but also wouldn't it, there are also a lot of people saying uh, sort of uh, stay away from Islam there, there's, there's all kinds of views on the matter right now it's definitely more in the forefront of people's yes. minds well, the majority of the people in America do not control the media. There's special interest groups that control the media. And the media seems to be projecting just that, to try to get people to, to stay away from Islam. But it's having the reverse effect. Before this event took place, Islam was recognized as the fastest growing way of life in America and throughout the world. And that does not please a lot of people. So when they can use events to affect people's concepts and ideas, there are forces that, that do just that. Mm -hmm. So this is what I see uh, happening. You call it uh, what you say, mentioned about uh, good and evil. Uh, I've heard uh, 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 something I believed and I liked from actually a priest who was in Park Street Church. 
He said the line that distinguishes between uh, good and evil doesn't go between some people and other people. It goes through every heart, good and evil. You know, it's in everybody. Uh, and the, 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 the struggle between good and evil has been going on since human being existed on the earth. And it's going to be there until the, the end of this world. Good and evil have been struggling, and they are struggling, and they're going to be struggling to the end of the world. And uh, they are not distinct by those are evil and those are good. You cannot do that, you know, because there is evil and good in every human being. I'd like to pick up on that. And before I do, I just want to say, when, when you're moving your arms, be a little careful to not cover your microphone because it might blot oh, okay. out the sound when we I, look I, at it I later. Do my best. But I, but I, I, I don't even believe in good and evil personally. I mean, I don't believe in anything. So we can, we yeah. can just start that right off the bat. So I, I, you know, I mean, everything could be a joke. But on the other hand, you know, I believe to the degree that you know I'm alive and I have to believe something that my feet are on the ground. Otherwise, I couldn't take a walk forward. You know, but I don't believe in good and evil even. Um, that's a that's a that's a very um, old characterization, you know, from time immemorial. This idea that evil, you know, something something special and almost different, you know, of a different substance. It's just those, like language expressions to distinguish between something and something something we don't like. You know, they are just expressions, but they are not some kind of categories that. You know, Entity. Yeah, it's not a real not, thing, but it, but I think not, it's looked at as a real thing. They exist. Like in the movie The Exorcist, where you you know, or people that believe children can be born evil and they need to be exorcised, that there really is literally evil. Um, <coughs> there is there is uh, evil and there there is good. You know, you can you can measure things by the effect that it has on life on people on the creation. And, and we have to use, you know, life has no meaning without definition. So things have to be defined in order for us to have order and understanding and to kind of help guide the choices that we make. So we have to have some kind of distinction between uh, what's good, which is beneficial to mankind, and what's evil, which has a detrimental effect, detri detrimental effect on mankind. Not just short-term expediency, but for for long-term survival. Well, I definitely agree with the idea that we all have some evil in us, definitely. And, you know, you never know, this is a Christian idea, you never know who sits at the right hand of God. You, you never know if the person in the worst jail cell up, up for the death penalty could be sitting at the right hand of God in Judgment Day. You know, that's, that's a philosophy of, of the, you don't know who Jesus is, you know, in the, right. the Christian religion says, be careful. Uh, who you might turn away from your door because it could be Jesus. You know, the same people that we shun. So, so we, we all have things about us that are, uh, that are, you know, not good and imperfect. Mm -hmm. and, um, and the idea of situational ethics that some people uh, disagree with, that pushed to the right situation, a lot of people will show themselves to be something they never imagined they could mm -hmm. be. Exactly. So yeah. a lot, and a lot of people say, no, it's absolute. It doesn't depend on the circumstance. Either you're good or you're evil, and that's it. It doesn't matter what the circumstance yeah. is, that it's an absolute definition. That's true. Now, yeah. with Christ Jesus, one of the main things that in, that, in that scenario that you just explained, they, there's a de-emphasis put on the physical, because we don't know what shape or form that Christ will return in or who he may look like. So it's not a physical thing that we should be focusing on. But there is an effort to keep most people today on the physical level and not understand those things that are more powerful because the most powerful things are unseen. When you say physical, what do you mean? Can you describe that a little better? Physical meaning something that you can see, you know, mm -hmm. something tangible that you can uh, uh, taste, uh, touch, feel physical things. What are, the, what are things that you can't taste, touch, or feel? Your, your faith cannot be, mm -hmm. you can't hold it. Mm -hmm. you know, your, your, the the mm -hmm. intention in your heart, you know, you cannot grab that. You know, uh, 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 creativity, you know, uh, you can't grab creativity. Uh, uh, 
uh, you know, the mind of an individual is, is, is abstract. It's not physical. You can't grab it, but it has, it's, in the, it's, it's lodged inside a physical entity called the brain, but the mind is distinct from the physical. From it's the metaphysical. Beyond the physical, Beyond meta, the physical. metaphysical, yes. Beyond the physical, mm -hmm. yes. Okay, so um, how do you feel about uh, us defining mm -hmm. uh, people? I, now, wouldn't it be, would it be fair to say that in countries besides the United States, namely Middle Eastern countries, possibly African countries, would people be defining what we're def defining ourselves as good to an extent by make, making these categorizations in a very public way? Would people in other places be using just the, uh, the same word for, for us as we uh, might be for them? Uh, actually, uh, it's been this distinction between good and evil has been used in, in uh, private uh, beneficial of certain people. Do you get what I'm saying? So uh, uh, nobody have the absolute measurement to say this is absolute good and this is absolute evil. You know, you know, I hate somebody or I hate what somebody is doing. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to call him evil. You know what I mean? <laughs> And you know, calling it's each, like name calling. Yeah, it's name. It's like that. And a name calling is not going to solve uh, the problem. We're going to be we're going to be addressing what's really uh, matters mm -hmm. and what's really would uh, fix this and what's really going to get the whole world to come together and and live together in peace. We would we, we need to be addressing that not just taking care of our uh, own beneficial and our own uh, interest, you know, and forget about selfish, that. Because selfish. Interest. Selfish. Because people in power, actually, they are just seeking their own interest. Okay, and I want to stay on that, but just to go back, <laughs> might there be people in countries other than ours looking at us and calling us evil? Yes, we know that's true. They mm -hmm. may not use the word evil, but... Certainly, they think of us as demonic and, yes. you know, yeah, as a whole people. Some of them In other words, it, yeah. that we, we as identified as with this country, could be looked at as demons, you know, as... Yeah, usually, what, what, you know, when people are making those kinds of uh, statements, they are making a distinction between the government of the United States and the people of the United States. And most of, the, most of it is a, is a result of the policies that we have in these countries, supporting governments that are oppressing the people there. And you find uh, there are uh, a lot of kindred relationships between the common people everywhere, you know, because they're all going through the same concerns, food, clothing, and shelter. You know, but when you have uh, the, the government, and most American people have no idea what the United States government is doing overseas, and that has to change. The people have to become more involved and be made more aware of, of the policies that the United States government is having in, other, in these other countries, which is creating a lot of confusion uh, worldwide. But that's not likely to happen, realistically. I not think it is. I, I have faith in the American people that, that they, you know, uh, I, really, I, I believe in people. And when you look at the context of America and the history of this country, it's based on an informed citizenry, which is not what's happening. We have disinformed or misinformed citizenry. And it's on the idea of, 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 of uh, independence, you know, and self-government. You can't have government outside the individual if you don't have government inside the individual. Yes, but I think people come home, they're very pressed, they barely can stand the news. I, I know that for a fact. Many people tell me that, you know, to stay less depressed. and mm. there's, there's just too much to do to be really... And if they haven't traveled and lived a lot in other countries, most people are looking for an escape from mm. the stresses that are so many of one individual life. But that's by design, you know, to, to continuously bombard the people with negative news. There's more positive things happening in the world than negative. What are but, the positive ones? Oh, you have human uh, spirit being exemplified, you know, in, in various parts of the world that are escaping the, the, the effects of the circumstances that they're in. But we don't hear about these things because they are not considered as newsworthy. What we hear about are the negative things, the things that are designed to keep us depressed, to keep us pessimistic and not having faith. 
and then to keep us scared afraid is which a yeah a fear keep us with with fear uh, i think this uh this country is being recovering from uh, a very uh, bad uh, disease that they admitted it which is profiling and discrimination they've been uh healing and been recovering very well but they haven't recovered uh all the way i believe that uh, there is still some people here uh, uh, don't find any a problem going to uh, distinct and profile people for first thing you know these guys did that oh profile all these people and make him on that uh, you know place they, they are so we need to stop this we need to recover all the way from profiling uh, we need to uh, deal uh, with other people as they are equal because we are all children of one and one man and one woman Adam and Eve this is what I believe and what other uh, uh, faith people believe you know people are equal and these people do not doing that because they are just stupid or just because they are from that race or you know what I mean we don't want to keep doing that there's reasons for I've heard a, a guy yesterday was talking <coughs> about and I'm addressing something you I think you would like me to address it September 11 he said what would make 19 young men have the the whole future in front of them they are all very well educated. They are all rich and have a very nice life to live. They have, most of them have no problem back there in their uh, countries. What make these people go kill themselves that awful way and killing others? They were outraged. They were got, they were got dis, uh, I mean, what the word, disparate. They got desperate from what's happening, you know, for, 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 for people in Palestine, for people every other way in the world. The U.S. got involved with its military in, you know. We've been driving the world crazy about us. And we should be, we, you know, we could, we could save ourselves from any uh, more attacks could harm us or harm uh, our the people we love around us here in the U.S. But do you guarantee that you are going to uh, protect your children and your grandchildren and your great grandchildren from what's going to happen to them as a result of what we are doing now in the Middle East and what's in what we are doing everywhere else in the world? Yeah. Well. So we need to be thinking about our children and our grandchildren here in this country because we love it. We care about it. We need to think about it, not only today and tomorrow, but in the long run future, children and grandchildren. Well, I don't like anybody making enemies on my behalf, that's for sure. I like to be able to travel around, which I'm not able to do so much so freely anymore. Yeah, but on the other hand, um, I don't hold, you know, I want to make it very clear that I don't hold any partiality to one view or the other because there's plenty of blame to go around yeah. from both sides. <coughs> plenty of blame. Yeah. Like some people say, they say, all right, yes, we you should by all means understand the desperation especially for the people who are not living well okay the ones that are living in very difficult circumstances you must try to understand the desperation but they say to kill innocent people is never you yeah, know justifiable we're not justifi and no. that's possibly there is a possible you know no, definitely we are we are not justifying killing innocent the, people killing innocent people is against every human uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Morality. morality and principle. It's against everyone who uh, is, uh, you know, uh, thinking seriously. Logic. Yeah, thinking. But there's, you know, there's all there's another perspective, you know, and I, I can certainly concur with uh, with Sharif on on what he's saying, uh, and if if I was to adopt that particular perspective, 
But I don't really know what happened. In fact, none of us really know what happened. There has not been any proof. There's been so many disparities between those 19 people. There were six of them that we know are alive, that they say were on these planes, and they're in various parts of the world, including in America. So there's a, there's a, a, a one way to look at this is always follow the money. You know, where does the money, where does the money trail lead to? Who benefited, you know, from that event? And there are uh, people in that are speaking out about the possibility of there being, you know, you know how, how could someone from a cave in Afghanistan orchestrate something like what took place on 9-11 in America when we have the most sophisticated defense system in the world? And if, if I was in charge and, and there, was a, there was a security breach like that, my head would roll. Mm -hmm. Now, whose head rolled? Nobody's head rolled. That tells me that somebody that was in charge did the right thing. Yeah. I think I think we can say that Osama bin Laden <coughs> definitely uh, was involved in in if he's still alive. I say was because he may not be alive. Involved in um, getting marshalling people to be able to uh, carry out practices that would have uh, consequences for the United States. Now, whether he was from a cave able to do, I understand, you know, I, I, I was in Afghanistan I, mm -hmm. before it was war-torn. I kind of lived there a little while, and the idea that you're in a cave somewhere and uh, such a sophisticated planet certainly takes, you know, it couldn't, couldn't work that way. Right. It couldn't work that way, you know, you couldn't have that as your, I understand that, but we do know that there are uh, Palestinian persons that, that do go ahead and kill people, you know. So we do have examples of people that are killing innocent people, or the Irish example, yeah. you know. That but you cannot just talk about Palestinians go killing uh, innocent people without addressing the whole problem. It's like just taking a couple of words out of a text and say, uh, you know, without addressing the whole thing. You know, there is a very big organized army uh, force going and killing innocent Palestinians and demolishing homes every day in very big numbers like there is a system to kill a certain number every week or every month or something like that they don't go and kill 50 or or 100 a day but there's not you know over the last few weeks not only single day best without killing fifth, five or six. Nobody mentioned it in our media here. We don't hear about that, about that. But if some Palestinian dared to just enter the, to the Palestinian province and try to injure uh, some Israeli, you know, the whole world, you know, blows up. Wow, look, at, they are killers. They are, you know, these people. And it's listen, their land that's yeah, being occupied. And, I, yeah. and there's something else here is very important to uh, address, which is uh, w people just go right away to look, they are, this people are Muslims and this is th what they are doing now is coming from th the Quran. Why don't you address the real problem? The, everyone raised in attack in Israel has a father or a brother or a family member who were killed by Israeli army. He ha has a, a, do a home or more that were demolished. These people are war, war prisoners, war, uh, prisoners of war for 50 years now. Millions of people who are Palestinians, they are all prisoners of war for 50 years now. And the whole world is happy with that. The US is supporting that very strongly. And we just keep addressing the Palestinians who just go to do some uh, kind of revenge or something coming out of desperation, yeah. you know, it has nothing to do with Islam. We need to be addressing the problem. There is occupation. There is army forces occupying people's land, killing their children, demolishing their houses. We need to be solving that so we stop the violence. We right. break the cycle. Yeah, there's a lot we need to be solving and not, not with violence, <coughs> that's for sure. Uh, um, but um, isn't, but would it be okay for people in that very desperate situation, admittedly, whose blood runs cold, growing up, you know, maybe in torture or family members tortured, the blood runs cold, you know, terrorists actually can change mentally, psychologically, they become, you know, 
able to kill without. Mm -hmm. Well, even in war, any war, yeah. if you're able to do a lot of killing remorselessly, you become uh, different. But is it okay to kill civilians who technically no. aren't part of the military? No, no, not at all. I tell you one thing. If, if you want to address this as a Muslim thing, because it happens in a Muslim war, uh, I have uh, uh, something was narrated about Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who is the Prophet of Islam, who is, you know, yes. you, you know him. He said to his army w while he was sending them out to fight with enemies, don't demolish a house, don't kill a child, don't kill an old man, don't kill a woman. Whoever doesn't carry a weapon, don't kill him. Whoever gets into his home and close his door, don't follow him inside his home. This is our teachings about war, not about the, the peace time. It's, uh, these are our uh, teachings about the war state. These are people are in fight, fighting. Okay. Don't kill a man, an old man, old woman, or a woman at all. Don't kill a child. Don't demolish a house. Don't cut a tree. Yeah. Don't cut a tree. Or don't destroy vegetation. All right, let me yeah. say what Jesus said. Not that I'm... Let me play expert here on yeah. Christianity. Let me, let some, me say what Jesus, Jesus said. From you. He says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Yeah. He says, don't have a war. Mm. He says, turn the other cheek. Yeah. He says, no war. But really, people, there was just one time when he oh, <coughs> turned over the... Uh, the money boxes and so forth of the Pharisees, but other than that, when he got momentarily a little, little angry, but basically, as the older he grew, it was pacifism, you know, mm. total pacifist philosophy. Don't have a war. Now, I have a different view on, on Christ Jesus. You know, he, he wasn't, he, he didn't have to, he wasn't a warrior, he was a peacemaker, but he confronted evil when he saw it. He didn't shun it, and he faced his destiny you know, with, with dignity, he wasn't afraid of what he had to live or, or, or die from. And when he returns, on the return of Christ, he's going to be swinging a sword. That's the Old Testament. He, he was not in the Old Testament right. in, that, in, that, in, in that regard. Mm -hmm. This was uh, when they spoke about his return, he's going to, and, and the, the, mm -hmm. the sword is going to be dripping with mm -hmm. the blood of the wicked. And mm -hmm. I thought I heard a verse from the uh, New Testament says, uh, on, on uh, Jesus' tongue, says, I didn't come to this world to bring peace, I came to this world to bring sword. I've heard something like mm -hmm. that, and I think that I heard that he said, I came to bring the father against his son, and the son against his father. Yeah. There's a verse in the... Yeah, there's this truth to that. You know, I've the, heard the, about the word, that. The, the things that he said, would create that kind of uh, distinction because he had to separate, you know, separate, you know, one quality from another. So yes, he, you know, he and he also stated that I come not to change the law that came before me. I come to fulfill. So he indicated that he was a part of a lineage and that he was not making any changes from anything that was written he, before. He wasn't even a man making peace, that, you know, per se, a Martin <coughs> Luther King. He wasn't a, a, a man making peace. He was just a man of peace, yeah, mm -hmm. more of a uh, yeah. Mahatma Gandhi, you know, more of like just that whatever. But let me t say that. Mm -hmm. uh, violence at a certain point is not a very bad thing. And don't and misunderstand me. Like, you have to punish the crime, the criminal. You have to get him in jail. And this is violence. Wait a minute. What I yes, it is violence. Okay, you have to it punish. It is violence, and, people and you know what I believe about that? I believe you have to sequester people. You if they do something really bad, like murder somebody, then you must remove them because they remain a threat. Okay. by and large, there are so extenuated, I'm but that's not punishment. Okay. you know the idea that you have to punish people, you know, for their wicked ways. I definitely have mm. have yeah have qualms about that. You have qualms about the position of President Bush. Yes, I do. Mm. Yes, I have qualms about the way he exhibits what he calls Christianity, yes. Yes, and also the, the, the historical function of America. <coughs> and I think we're, the country is kind of getting off track from the role uh, that we have historically played in the world, you know, because we have been a, a country historically that every country looked up to because of the four freedoms that we have, have been being taken away now. 
you know, in our historical position of standing up for the rights and for the good of humanity. And that's not happening anymore. Now we're following selfish interest of materialism and oil and other groups like that and political. And of course people would debate that, you know, they would say, uh, and that, and, and uh, we certainly could get into that, but I'd like to just go back to another thing about um, the rage when you said people become outraged. Would it be possible that some of the oppression felt by the governments themselves, yes, the United States and its oil interests certainly aligned in helping governments to, to be what they are, or a camaraderie of all people, you right. know, around the world, but would oppression, severe oppression, feed into uh, outrage as well? You know, of not being able to say even as much as we're saying right now. Yes, well, you know, we have these yeah. forces in the, that are in the environment that are creating a culture. So it definitely creates a culture of violence. When you have, when you're taking resources away and people are, uh, are reduced to the animal level where they're, where they're starting to compete for meager resources, you know, then you definitely create uh, this whole culture or environment of survival of the fittest. You know, and whereas under uh, in a, in a, a scenario where you have an abundance where you're sharing with one another, you take on this culture of taking from one another. You know, so uh, that's part of a, a systemic process. So culture is what we will need to be focusing on uh, and get away from some of these other How do you focus on culture? What do you mean? Well, you know, in the, in, in the broader sense of the word, for example, uh, America has, it's a language environment. You know, uh, I, I mentioned earlier, life has no meaning without definition. So whoever defines kind of controls. You know, so we're having a language environment, a word environment, that's creating behavior and creating culture. Because language... That's true. Language Conditioning and culture... Conditioning exists. Yes. That's true. The definition creates the culture. Input creates output. Exactly. Yes. yes. So, so that's true. So if we get rid of the language of racism, mm -hmm. the language of black people, white people, red and yellow people, you know, that's not how God defines us. Somebody originated that idea because it keeps people uh, polarized. But if you start dealing with the excellence that you find in culture, the, because there's good and bad in all culture, cultures. So you find excellence in culture, and you start identifying people based on their culture, you know, as opposed to this right. race type this, language. Do you have something to say? Uh, yeah, you asked me about uh, with the rage would yeah. result in violence. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, of not being able to know where to express it, it builds yeah. and builds and builds. Definitely, uh, the the they uh, get people get people like uh, deprived out of their freedom, out of their very simple rights. They would get them very dangerous. This is this is true for every uh, not a human being but animals. Go and attack a a, a cat. It would scratch your hand. Put him like in a corner. Yeah, mm -hmm. put him in a corner and like surround it. It would scratch your hand. Any kind of thing, even you know, very little creations, they would defend their own lives. In other words, our biology is wired such that it doesn't take much to make us want to strike. Mm -hmm. I mean, even though with progression over millennia, and we have made, there have been some better times and worse times, but we have made some progression, however small, towards ideas of higher order nature yes. than to just go and cut off everybody's head. Right. Yeah. Uh, We're evolving. <laughs> slowly. <laughs> slow o o -ly. Yeah. But, but there is in us. We're wired such, you know, to have that immediate reaction. Yeah, it becomes paradigms and habits and culture, you know, and tradition. You know, those are the things I'm talking about when you have certain conditions you know, it, in certain environments, you have a, a, a culture of abundance. So you're going to get a different behavioral pattern from the individual under those circumstances than you'll get in an, with an individual who is who was born in poverty, raised in poverty, lives in poverty. You know, so it creates a different cultural behavioral pattern and different paradigms of thought. You know, and which and leads and to choices. Think about in a life. boy or a girl who was a teen, who was was very in the very beginning in his life and he just go and kill himself to kill a couple of people with him he's he's 
you know, what kind of disparate has happened to this boy or this girl to go and kill himself in this very awful uh, way by blowing himself up? He, it's not because he's just uh, mentally retarded or he is uh, psychic. No, it is because he, f he lost every hope in life. He doesn't see any light in the front and ahead. He, 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 he has no, uh, uh, like, what the word you use for that? He, he, you know, he has no dreams that he think that he would, would be able to fulfill one day. You know, think about, you cannot imagine that feeling because you live here in a free country. You can say whatever you want to say. You can do whatever you want to do. You live a very comfortable, very convenient we life. We live a very comfortable yeah. life by the world standards. Yeah, and we would new, never. This, what we're doing right now, mm -hmm. is like Saudi Arabian princes, really, relatively speaking. Yeah, we, we live an ultra-comfortable life. And, uh, but building on that, we will never We go to McDonald's. Appreciate <laughs> what these little guys doing we need to be giving these boys hope in life listen what makes teenagers in the united states want to die they're dying in greater numbers than ever they they want they commit suicide mm. you know for different what you were saying culture determining output of what people are like the the it's not just the words being said it's the technology and some of us yes. are in technology it's mm. technology uh, they're, they're just finding there's no satisfaction. I don't care what words you use to just get on a train and go and learn computer and, and you know, just sort of have a, a robotic life, a very mechanistic life where, there's, where you're not uh, grounded in a, in, a, in a human relating day by day where time moves so fast there is no time. You know, these kind of things are influencing people to just say, there's nothing here for me really and truly and this is a good uh, very good question he's just asking about why people in a very convenient life would kill themselves exactly also because i have a, an answer for that because they are away from the 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 faith that keeps the the, the heart like settled down and and comfortable and keeps the soul uh in in, in connection with God, I know that you don't like this kind oh, of... Oh, I'm so glad you brought that up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I understand. But you know Thanks, what? Thanks, Victor. <laughs> you know what? This, uh, this guy, I think, they kill themselves. If you get back to one of all these people, you will find him in, not in the favor of any faith, like you just uh, addressed yourself. <laughs> yes. You know, yes. they are not. They're in the... They are not Jews. They are uh -huh. not Christians. They uh -huh. are not Muslims. Uh -huh. Right? Maybe. Okay. I think some probably are brought up in the Christian religion, Jewish religion. A lot of them yeah. get confused. They, they look at what's called religion mm -hmm. and they see all the chaos in what's called religion because, you know, there's, a, there's an interest for some people to use the term religion because then you make a separation. This religion, that religion, this religion. When, act, when in actuality, there's only one religion. They're all related. It, it, it's just people get stuck in certain areas and don't understand the big concept. In, in the Quran, you know, Allah uses the best definition. He doesn't call Islam a religion in the Quran. He says it's a deen. It's a complete and total way of life. When you look at Abraham and Moses and Jesus, you know, they didn't, what was Jesus' religion? It wasn't Christianity. No. What was Abraham's religion? It wasn't Christianity. But he had a way of life. And so did Moses and so did Jesus. And their religion was, their way of life was submission to God. And those who submit to God consciously are defined as a Muslim, one who, dis who submits his will willingly to God. So there are some people who may not call themselves Muslim, but they're in submission to God. So in, in the, and when you look at the work that they do, it's Muslim work. And the word Islam, by the, by the way, means submit. Yes, and this is, I think, uh, Christ you could better describe than submitting to God as uh, being um, non-material, very non-material, more than Islam, more than Jew, definitely, non-material person. He did allow that if you weren't of that persuasion, fine, 
but you know, he, he invited to come follow him in the non-material way of life. And he says, look, God takes care of all these creatures. He'll take care of you. Come follow me. Put down your net. And he said, fish. not my will, but thy will be, got, yeah. be done. So he distinguished between his own will yeah. and the will of God. But it, what, he wasn't talking about submission. He was for non-materialism and kindness. Love your neighbor as yourself is, the, is the, probably the most paradigmatic when he says philosophy of Christ. Turn the other <laughs> cheek. Don't give what you get. Give Christianity. Give simplicity, kindness, no matter what. Mary mm. Magdalene, give kindness. Yeah. Give kindness in place of vengeance. Well, I he, think he every, didn't call every it message. No, you know, no, it was no, no. Those that hated him oh, no. that coined the term yeah. Christianity. No. His enemies coined, coined that phrase. But he said, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven mm -hmm. in the Lord's Prayer. He mm -hmm. speaks about the will of God, mm -hmm. which he was in submission to. No, yeah, he but did, he, he wasn't talking about submitting it like with Allah, you know, that, that's mm. the philosophy of submission. I'm not saying he didn't, mm. but the focus, the gestalt of the let's, two are different. Let's not, make, let's not get confused about the term Allah. When you look at the, some of the older Bibles, they use the same term. You know, Allah, A-L means the, La means God. In the, in the, uh, uh, when you look at the Jehovah Witnesses, when they use the, the, the term that, that, that deals with the, uh, uh, the, the four letters the, uh, in, in the tet tetragrammaton, they call it, uh, 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 the Jehovah, Yahuwah, Y-W-A-H, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, Yahuwah, mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a term in Arabic, Yahuwah, oh, oh it, it is, is he, mm -hmm. you know, right. oh, it is he, Yahuwah, right. you know, it said Yahuwah, Elohim, mm -hmm. so they take the vowels, they, they didn't use the vowels, it was Elohim, E-L-H-M, you know, and I am indicated the pluralization of the term, like majesty or the governor. The governor speaks for the state, or the and president yeah. speaks for all the states. So it used that term, Elohim, but it was spelled E-L-A-H, Allah. Not to, not to interrupt you, but uh, when sometimes in, Arab we, in Arabic we pray, we say Allahum. Allahum give me this and this is this. Allahum protect me from this and this is. Allahum. So it's an Arabic word, Allahum. Yeah. So it's the same term that's in the Bible, but they have taken it out a lot because they don't want people to make the connection. And I want to add something else, that Arab Jews and Arab Christians, because they're Arab Jews and Arab Christians also. Use, Arab Jews and Arab Christians, if you go in a church in Egypt, they will find him pray to Allah. They're not saying God because they're speaking Arabic. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, it is language. It's the translation for word God into Arabic is Allah. And the, the, no the evidence... The evidence is in temples, Jewish temples, and Christian churches, in the Arab world, they pray to Allah. And they, you would write the word Allah written on the walls in the uh, temples and in a Christian uh, places, churches. Mm -hmm. so and, and like when they say Christ was on... The not cross, everybody said, knows that. He said, Eli, Eli. And that means my God. You know, they used the term, the letters E-L-I. But E-L, you know, and it was A-L. It means the, just like in, mm -hmm. in Arabic and in, in mm -hmm. Spanish. It Spanish. means uh -huh. the, the mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. So when you put mm -hmm. the I on it, then you make it like, we call, my, my father is Ab, Abi. <laughs> Abu is father. Abi uh -huh. is my father. And you know, uh, you know Nancy, uh, this is a very simple thing to be uh, ignored of, to be don't, you know, not to know about it, to, that Allah is God and God is Allah and it's language matter. So... Uh, what I get out of that is there is there are people are in a very big interest of keeping American people in a deep ignorance about Arabs and Muslims and keep the Arab world and Muslim world in a big ignorance about Americans. Do you know where before I come here what I what I what, what my background about about the U.S. What I've heard about what. What I think, what I thought I would be facing, faced with when I come here, violence, sex, drugs. <laughs> this is it. Yeah. I can't believe you didn't find that. Yeah. Oh. Thank God it is not. <laughs> you know, and there is there are people now are in favor of uh, introducing America to the Arab world appropriately, mm -hmm. uh, more appropriately. Now, no people know a little more about the U.S. That it's not all about 
all these bad things. In the same time, when you talk to any American now, he would tell you that Arabs, Muslims, are like equivalent, that it's just like as if you said violence and killing. You know what I mean? This is, I put, Terror, I, terrorism. terrorism. Mm -hmm. I put those two things in, in, in two sides of one balance. There is some people are in very big favor of keeping those people ignorant about those are, I mean, even telling him negative things about him mm -hmm. and do the same thing to the other people. There, is, there are people in favor to get at the end a clash between civilizations like they call it. But there is no clash. We have in common much, much more than we have in, 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 in different. We are, you know, we have a lot in common much dialogue, than... The dialogue uh, of civilizations. We need to know, we need to learn about each other. Dialogue, we only give PhDs all over the world and especially in this country in negotiation, in non-violent means to, so, you know, solving uh, any kind of problem whatsoever. High degrees of study are, are, are spent, institutes are made for people to learn yeah, and, how and to talk to each other. And we would like so to what kind of hypocrisy is that? I am so tired of war. To War is a total bummer. Bombing Primitive. is a total bummer. Bombing is just not where it's at. Bombing is so through, really bad. Through this show, I'm inviting everybody on both sides to go learn about the other, th the other side. It's better to learn about him before it's too late. I would like Americans to learn about Islam from its sources, from within. Don't ask a ma an enemy. Don't ask somebody who is already, an, you know, not in favor of Islam. He is already taking this defending position against Islam. Go Muslims. Go to uh, Islamic centers all across the country. There is lots of Islamic centers and they are available. Go to the internet. There's lots of sites that defines and teaches about uh, Islam and Muslims and Arab people. Go learn about these people. They don't hate you guys, you know. And we would like to receive any question to answer very openly and very frankly. And I don't know why people don't uh, call but us. Here we are. Because I don't have a system of calling on, this, on oh, this show. That's all right. why. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, though, that really people are only learn properly, I think, in in being in elbows distance yeah, with each other. That's that's how you really learn. A neighbor, you know, someone at your church at work, or you go to the country and you yeah. live there. I think, yeah. you know, because this whole idea of studying it. You know, we we do too yeah. much studying. Even though you've done a lot of nice studying, I can but see. If but you, if you cannot but generally, go, we do t we study a problem into oblivion. You know, there, there's nothing that's more know? valuable than the relationship yeah, that we have with exactly, one another. Exactly. Relationships are the things that but make everything. But what I'm saying, if, yeah. if you cannot go to the country yeah, to I learn, know, but, you but still, still can, like, call some people who are from this background. Yeah. Go to Islamic centers. Yeah. Go c c call me. You know, here in the. Roxbury studio. I call uh, Mr. Sharif also. I had many more questions. We were just starting to go towards the hot topics. Uh, uh, and I don't mean hot, that reminds me of like having something hot in the media. No, mm -hmm. I don't mean that. Not a sensationalistic. But. Uh, and it's well, very hot here also. Is now. it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not that bad. Yeah. Um, okay, so that's going to do it for us tonight. And I thought. Um, as a as a totally um, symbolic gesture, uh, we would just leave the show with our arms around each other. What do you say, guys? All okay, right. okay. Here we are. So good night to you, and we'll see you again on the next toward a quality of life. Okay, great. All right, yes, you have done a lot of studying. It yes, went, it you went so far. Very nice, very nice. Yeah, I'm glad I have that. Very nice, very nice. You do a lot of reading on you. Yeah. Did you make a copy? More than the Koran, obviously.